That's right, I feel terrible. So, this is my friends on the video. So, it's like this, and it's really easy to get on them. And it covers them really nice and makes them nice and cozy. So that's the handkerchief scarf. Okay, so this is what the handkerchief scarf looks like. So you need a triangle of whatever outer fabric you want, a triangle of fleece. You put it right sides together and then we're gonna sew all the way around and then turn it right side out. in the middle of a straight line because I think it's easier to turn things right side out and close them up if there's a nice flat line. So I'm gonna do about a fourth inch seam allowance which means I have the edge of the fabric touching the edge of my presser foot. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length a little just so we can go a little faster. And then needle down, press your foot up, turn it. And it's fine that it's not totally lined up. That's gonna be on the inside. Turn it again. And this is so funny, I have had this scarf cut out to make for almost a year. Well, at least a year. <laughs> My friends Liz and Elizabeth designed this fabric. It's a Riley Blake print. Their blog is Simple Simon and Company. Um, and they also have started designing all this awesome fabric. So this is one of the prints from their very first line. So we sewed around, we left this here. Now we're gonna clip our corners, clip our corner, clip our corner. That just makes it so that we can turn it and it can poof out more. Then we're gonna flip it. Then we'll have our scarf. And all we have to do is top stitch it around close, add a buttonhole, and we'll be good. I told you, super stinking easy, right? Okay, let's flip that out. Flip this side out. I'm gonna iron at this point too. Okay, and the bulk of it is gonna make it so that it's harder to get like a really sharp point, but we should be able to get somewhat of a point. See, that's pretty good. Just kind of stick my finger in. You can do the pin thing, just be careful not to tear it. That one's being a little more tough. Okay. Just kind of pull it out. Then take your iron and see here's the hole. Make sure that the fabric folds underneath. And then we're just gonna stitch all the way around it to, clo to close up the hole and just kinda make it look more finished and clean. This is so cute. I love this fabric. I wish they had made this one a knit. A knit. So we just top stitch around. Remember there's bulk here, so I like to go slower and prepare myself in case the needle decides to be annoyed at the bulk. 
you can tell that I'm really actually legitimately scared of breaking needles. I hate it. I'm just going to use a hand wheel on this bulky part and just kind of scooch it a little because I don't have anything to pull it from the back until the feed dogs catch it. Okay, then all we're going to do is add a buttonhole and sew a button on. So that step was mostly for looks. Um, it, it closes up the hole, but the rest of it is mostly for looks. And then we sew a buttonhole kind of in one of the corners. Does not matter which corner. Okay, so with this style of buttonhole foot, you put the button that you want to use in this back part and that and then it it just it kind of measures it for you how to use it I didn't grow up using this kind of buttonhole gadget so it was a little I was nervous to use it but once I figured it out it's actually very very easy okay The only thing that's a little annoying is that there's the bulk in the fabric here. So I'm gonna start it on with the bulky side to me so it doesn't bump up and, uh, and tell the sensor that it's time to start back. Okay, so you just kinda go and it measures the button. that okay? And then it'll stop for you when it's done. Okay, so a different time, I'll spend more time showing you all the steps of that and how to do it and show you when it starts acting annoying what to do. But for now, let's just finish that up. Sew us a button on. So just stab it in. And then we'll add a button. Okay. Where's my needle and thread? Let's see. Then I'll, I'll call Teddy in so he can try it on for you guys. Got a thread and needle. Okay, do you guys know this trick about threading needles? Okay. So for buttons, I like to do four layers of thread. So you do a, a folded double layer in your hole, then you fold it, and then I wrap it around my finger, and then I roll it, and then I pull it, and it makes a nice thick knot. Did I do that on screen? If not, I'll do it a different time. See, I need to make a list of all these little basic things that we should go over sometime. Okay, and then we put our button on the other corner. Just sew it on. So, up, and then across, and then up, and across. Then I'll probably do the first way again, just because this is 
with it being on a toddler, it's a little more of a stressed button. Then I like to sew kind of across before I tie my knot, just to make it a little more, just so that the thread's going in the opposite direction that it's gonna be pulled. And so even if it gets yanked on, it's going to have some strength pulling in the opposite way. And then this is my favorite way to knot a button. In fact, I, I do that and then I hold my thumb down and I do that. And then I always tie my needles off before I cut them. That way they're ready for me to go next time. Okay, let's try it on. 